Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be explaining the dexamethasone suppression test. We're going to learn this topic by solving questions so that you understand it better. Dexamethasone is basically a corticosteroid. It can be used to diagnose Cushing syndrome. This can be done at two levels, a low-dose dexamethasone test and a high-dose dexamethasone test. Under normal circumstances, the hypothalamus produces corticotropin-releasing hormone. This triggers the pituitary to release adrenocorticotrophic hormone. ACTH ultimately goes to the adrenals and stimulates it to secrete cortisol. Cushing's syndrome is a condition in which there is a lot of cortisol in the blood. This could either be due to an excessive cortisol production by the adrenals, consumption of exogenous steroids, excessive ACTH production by the pituitary, or due to ectopic ACTH production, as seen in some malignancies. The dexamethasone suppression test will help us find the most likely cause. Let's see how. Question number one. Low ACTH, high cortisol after an overnight low-dose dexamethasone suppression test is likely to be due to Option A. Exogenous administration of steroids Option B. Cushing disease Option C. Ectopic ACTH production Option D. This is a normal finding. Let's first understand the low-dose dexamethasone suppression test. What happens here is that the patient is given 1 mg of dexamethasone at night. The next morning, the cortisol levels are checked. Dexamethasone is a corticosteroid, so it will inhibit ACTH and CRH by negative feedback. Since there's less stimulation coming from above, the adrenals will secrete less cortisol. Ultimately, when cortisol levels are checked in the morning, they will be reduced. However, in patients with Cushing syndrome, the cortisol levels will remain high, despite the negative feedback. In order to differentiate these conditions, we go ahead to check the ACTH levels. In patients with an adrenal adenoma, there will be high cortisol produced autonomously by the adrenals. This cortisol suppresses the ACTH by negative feedback. Hence, the ACTH levels will be low in such cases. Similarly, in patients taking exogenous steroids, the negative feedback by these drugs will reduce the levels of ACTH. Ultimately, ACTH levels will be low in these two cases. We can differentiate one from another by reviewing the patient's medical history and by performing a CT to identify the adenoma. These two conditions are independent of ACTH. So, the correct answer is exogenous administration of steroids. Normal findings would have low cortisol levels. Cushing disease and ectopic ACTH productions will have high ACTH and high cortisol after an overnight low-dose dexamethasone suppression test. Cushing syndrome can also be caused due to an issue at the level of the pituitary. This is typically going to be a pituitary adenoma that makes a lot of ACTH. This is called Cushing disease. This ACTH stimulates the adrenals resulting in a lot of cortisol. This ACTH is produced by an adenoma, so low-dose dexamethasone does not suppress it. Hence, in such cases, both ACTH and cortisol levels will be high despite the negative feedback exerted by low-dose dexamethasone. Similarly, in patients with ectopic ACTH production, ACTH is made in places apart from the pituitary. This is typically seen in patients with lung cancer. Since ACTH is not produced in the pituitary, negative feedback will not work here. So, these patients will have high ACTH and high cortisol after an overnight low dose of dexamethasone. In order to differentiate these two conditions, we perform the high-dose dexamethasone suppression test. Question number two. Low ACTH, low cortisol after a high-dose dexamethasone suppression test is likely to be due to Option A, pituitary adenoma Option B, lung cancer In this test, 8 mg of dexamethasone is given 
High-dose dexamethasone is able to suppress the ACTH produced by the pituitary adenoma. So, the results in such case would be low cortisol and low ACTH. However, high-dose dexamethasone does not suppress the ACTH produced by lung cancer. So, the results here would be high ACTH and high cortisol. Here's how I think of it. Since the pituitary adenoma is benign, it can be suppressed by high-dose dexamethasone. However, since lung cancer is malignant, it cannot be suppressed. We can locate the adenoma with an MRI of the brain. Ectopic ACTH production can be located by performing a CT of the chest, abdomen and pelvis. So, the correct answer is pituitary adenoma, known as Cushing disease. Question number 3. What would the results of the dexamethasone suppression test be like in patients with post-traumatic stress disorder? Option A. Normal. Option B. Exaggerated. Option C. No suppression. The answer to this question is exaggerated. Cortisol is a stress hormone. However, in patients with post-traumatic stress disorder, there are very low levels of cortisol. Here's how I think of it. Cortisol helps us cope with stress. In patients with PTSD, low levels of cortisol might probably be the reason why they find it very hard to cope with stress. Cortisol levels are already low in these patients. By giving them dexamethasone, we reduce the ACTH levels by negative feedback. This will further decrease the cortisol levels in patients with PTSD. Hence, the test is exaggerated in patients with post-traumatic stress disorder. If you're taking the USMLE, I highly recommend you to check the Rapid Review playlist out. It has a lot of short videos with questions and explanations which are super important for the USMLE. If you have any topic that you want me to teach, please mention them in the comments. You can send me an email or text me on Instagram if you want to get in touch. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.